Hi, I'm Anthony, an engineer turned doctor, and I work in a big legal scam. Corporate dominated healthcare. Your doctors didn't know what they were getting into, and patients don't get the care they deserve. What patients are told is healthy usually isn't, and when they're told something is unhealthy, they're left without practical solutions. But that's exactly the way the system was built. It profits by making you sick and keeping you sick. Patients are getting played. Elite academia doesn't help when they're not at ground level where the problem starts. Patients aren't statistics. If we want actual change, we need to meet patients in the streets where they live and breathe. It's time to reveal the medical secrets that the system uses against you and to bridge the gap from elite to street. What's going on? Why are half of women with the most prevalent mutation not even developing breast cancer in the first place? It's harder to make money off of that than off of selling genetic tests, particularly when you can bypass doctors and just sell directly to patients. Referrals for BRCA genetic counseling increased 244%. Another example is after the famous editorial by Angelina Jolie in the New York Times. So unfortunately, my patients just don't hear that there's more to the story. Hi, I'm Anthony. My mom lost her mom to breast cancer at a young age. Many years later, here I am at the University of California at San Francisco, where pivotal breakthroughs were made in breast cancer genetic research. But were those breakthroughs overall a net positive or negative for women? Let's talk about the controversies. The story with breast cancer genetic testing begins with the vulnerable population at stake. That's women who have had mothers or sisters die of breast cancer. Well, when the BRCA gene mutation was discovered, you can imagine the corporate interests were quick to catch on, and with the help of direct-to-consumer advertising, were able to run interference and exploit this vulnerable population. Unfortunately, patient empowerment has been lost in this interference. Let's talk about it. Breast cancer is uniquely emotional. So much of a woman's identity and body image and sexuality is threatened by breast cancer. And this makes women particularly vulnerable. So it was a big deal when a genetic linkage for breast cancer was found, even if that only accounted for a small number of all breast cancers. Let's remember that the BRCA gene mutation accounts for about 7 to 10% of all breast cancers. It should come as no surprise that U.S. corporate interests immediately tried to patent the BRCA gene mutations. Fortunately, the United States Supreme Court intervened and didn't let it fly, deciding that you can't patent naturally occurring genes. But they didn't stop a whole industry from spawning out of that. And many genetic test manufacturers went on to make tests to detect the BRCA gene mutation. And more recently, a direct-to-consumer test has been approved by the United States Food and Drug Administration. Direct-to-consumer meaning that the test can be sold directly to patients without a doctor to order the test, without a doctor to explain the test rationale or its results. And if that sounds fishy to you, you're not alone. In fact, very few countries in the world, mostly the United States and New Zealand, even allow for direct-to-consumer advertising of any type. And it's because there is clearly a conflict of interest and potentially exploiting patients that don't have the right training to be able to interpret test results or to know what tests to order in the first place. We call it in medicine a wallet biopsy sometimes, where patients have to pay out of pocket for a test that they may not even need, but they might be pushed into ordering it. And this is a real risk with direct-to-consumer advertising, as you could imagine. So back to the genetic test. The message seems clear. Get the genetic test done so you have more information about yourself because more information helps you and helps doctors make decisions, right? Well, not necessarily. And in particular, because many patients aren't told that the risk of developing breast cancer, even if you have the BRCA gene mutation, is far from absolute. 
Many patients think that the risk is maybe 100% or 90%. In reality, the risk was once thought to be 70% and most recently appears to be closer to 50%, which is very unexpected given that this is one of the most strong genetic linkages we know of for breast cancer. And if only 50% of women with the gene mutation actually go on to develop breast cancer, and the other 50% don't ever develop breast cancer, and what gives? Why is that? <laughs> Why are half of patients not even getting breast cancer? And it's because there's likely a big interplay with the environment and everything they do for the rest of their lives. So the lifestyle component seems just as large, if not larger, than the genetic component. But it's harder to sell a lifestyle than to sell a genetic test. It's harder to make money off of that than off of selling genetic tests, particularly when you can bypass doctors and just sell directly to patients. And the story continues. Next time, we'll talk about who actually benefits from testing. It's not very many women and how corporate interests take advantage of the fear generated by this minority of women to make money off all women. We'll even look at some specific advertisements and check out just how much money is made, especially after Angelina Jolie's announcement. Spoiler alert, it's a lot. Until next time.